Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build a cheap, uh, it's probably around $15, Arduino irrigation controller using my sensors. I have this connected to my Vera Home Automation controller, but it could easily be used with um, any other controller compatible with my sensors. Check out the video description for a link to get more info on which controllers are compatible. Uh, anyway, before I show the actual controller, I want to do a quick demo of the irrigation controller working. So here it is. Um, I'm just going to turn on a single zone here. And there is a delay to allow the valves to um, hydraulically reset. So once the delay is satisfied, you can see my irrigation controller. And my irrigation pops up here. And then I can just turn it off again. And immediately turns off. All right, so enough of the demo. Let's go inside and take a look at the actual controller. OK, so this is my irrigation controller here. Before I get started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out and thank you to Jim, or Bulldog Lowell as he's known on the Mind Sensors forum. Without him, this would not have been possible. This is his project, his idea. Uh, basically, I'm just making an instructional video how to do it. Jim, I really thank you for doing this, for pioneering it. Okay, so just a quick demo of how this works. So you can see up here we have a status LCD screen. So right now it's just uh, system ready, so it's showing me the date and time. That's synced over from my home automation controller. Uh, and then it's saying when it last watered. Um, so I do have some options here. Obviously all this can be controlled by my home automation controller. I can start my, uh, my irrigation um, with automation or I can start it manually as you saw uh, either via app or the web interface or however else your uh, controller can be um, controlled. But I do have some, uh, I guess, onboard functionality here as well with this button. So when I press this button it's giving me the option to uh, water individual zones and I can cycle through each of my zones here. Uh, notice that these zones have names. I can either name them in my Arduino code or they sync down from my home automation controller. Uh, when I've settled on a zone that I want to water, I just let it go or stop pressing the button and then it will start watering that zone. So notice as soon as it started we have this LED here, this is a status LED, so it's a slow pulsing flash uh, when it's in a standby mode or a ready mode and then you'll see it, you know, this fast, fast flash here when it's actually watering. Um, my, uh, it's kind of hard to tell right now I guess because my, we're not in my yard, but um, this is my third zone here and you can see the status LED on my uh, relay is lit. So I can control individual zones or all zones right from my uh, controller here or using this button. And I can also stop them. So I just press this button once. Notice that irrigation's halted. Uh, and then it says when it was last watered. So that's just a quick demo. Let's go ahead and start building this so you can have one of your own. Okay, so this step isn't necessary, but I like to solder all my components to a PCB prototyping board here. Um, and some of these components, like my Pro Mini, my radio, I um, connect into this female breadboard con header connector strip here. So I just cut this down to size. So then uh, after I solder it in, I could remove my radio if necessary, replace it with another if it goes bad, or even a long range um, radio. Same for my Pro Mini. Um, that way it just makes it a little bit more um, changeable if, if I need to. So I've just kind of prototyped out how I want this to look. They're not soldered in yet, um, but I've just kind of scoped it out on my board and then now I'm going to solder them in. So it's not necessary. You could just connect in the wires, um, your DuPont cables to your radio and your Arduino and so on, but I've done it this way to make everything a little bit more reliable and easier for me. So now I'm just going to solder on my breadboard connector strips. I like to put a little bit more solder on here so I can solder my wires on a little bit easier. So what I'm doing is just pressing down on the um, PCB here, prototyping board, as I'm soldering it so those um, pins from the connector strip stick through and are flush to the PCB board. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some stripped out um, copper wire. This is just from Cat5 
wire that I had left over and I'm going to solder it to my um, terminal mounts, my PCB terminal mount here. So that'll be for my ground, so my PCB terminal mount here. That'll be for my ground and my 5 volt power. Now that I have my power and ground rails connected into my PCB board, I'm going to solder in my 3.3 volt power. So my radio requires 3.3 volt power and the rest of the circuit is going to use a 5 volt power. So this is my 3.3 volt regulator here, this tiny little thing. Um, they come in different models and sizes. Uh, I just chose this one because most of my projects use these prototype PCB boards so I can solder directly to them and it makes it a little bit smaller and cheaper. But if you have the bigger ones, those will work as well. Then I'm going to need two capacitors. So this guy up here is a 10 UF capacitor. And the polarity is important. So this white strip that you see here is going to be your ground side and then the other will be your power side. And then this guy over here is a 0.1 UF capacitor and the polarity doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and connect those in to my PCB board now. So here's a wiring diagram of how this is going to be hooked up. So you see I have the 3.3 volt regulator here with the in, the ground, and the out. And then I have the capacitors that will be connected into that as well. So that'll just help filter out the power. So the top pin on this little board or this little regulator here is the V in. Now I need to connect the one UF capacitor to the V in on the voltage regulator and ground. So this is what it looks like here. And then I'll just solder it in. Next, I'm going to take my 10 UF capacitor and connect it to ground, making sure I check the white stripe for the, the ground side, and then the V out of the 3.3 voltage regulator. Then finally, I'm going to take a piece of Cat5 wire with the shielding still on, and I'm going to solder it to the ground on the regulator and the ground on my PCB. So what I always like to do at this stage is test to make sure everything's working correctly. I found that this um, small voltage regulator, I've often missoldered something or missed a joint. Um, so I always test at this stage just to make sure it's correct so I don't have to debug further down the road. So first I'm just going to test my 5 volt power, which looks good. And then next I will test my 3.3 regulator output here. which also looks good, so we're ready to move ahead. Okay, so next I'm just going to trim down the legs of my capacitors here. And on the output of my 3.3 regulator, I just bent the leg down so I can use that uh, to connect in my 3.3 power. Uh, generally, I don't like to do this um, just because if I ever need to remove that capacitor for any reason, it gets a little bit more difficult. But if I do uh, use the leg, what I'll make sure I do is just leave a space so I can always clip it uh, to remove the capacitor later on. So um, that's just me personally uh, and how I do it. So now I'm just going to clip off the wires. Okay, I'm ready to start wiring up our radio. So I'm not going to go over the specifics of wiring up the radio. I've already done that in my MySensory Gateway video that I made, but I will just point out that uh, this white square here is pin number one, and that's going to be your ground pin. Then it counts up two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can reference uh, my video and also the My Sensor site for where those wires need to go. And I'm just going to quickly wire those up now. Okay, so I'm finished wiring up the radio into the Pro Mini here. So next, I just need to wire up power. So I'm going to. Uh, go to my raw pin with my 5 volt and then my ground pin. So I'm just going to go directly off of uh, the 5 volt here and then the ground here. Okay, so next we're going to connect a button that will be used to manually run all zones. So I'm going to use this button here. Any push button will work though. Um, and I can never remember which um, way the button works with these pins. So I'm just going to connect it to my multimeter here and then test it. So what I want to see is um, just zero, not four zero. So right now these two sides are connected permanently here. So then how I'm going to wire these is across like this. And then when I push it, 
should see four zeros just like that okay so these are the two sides that I need to connect in so this is where I'm going to place my button on my PCB board here and then one side is going to get connected to ground which it just so happens that my ground wire extends out um, to that pin there and then the other side is going to get connected into pin 3 for an interrupt so pin 3 on the Pro Mini so here's a little trick that I do when I'm wiring into the PCB board on the other side sometimes I can um, switch up the pins and make a mistake on which one I'm connecting into on my Pro Mini so what I'll do oftentimes is just put a piece of wire or some sort of marker uh, on the pin that I want to connect to so next to it then I'll flip it over and then I'll be able to tell exactly which pin I need to solder into so that's just a little trick of how I um, do that because I've often made mistakes in soldering to the wrong pins okay so now that my buttons wired up uh, to ground and to my pin 3 on my Arduino I'm going to put in a status LED so I'm just going to use a green LED and a 270 ohm resistor so the pol polarity of the resistor doesn't matter but the LED does so the short leg is going to connect into your ground and the longer leg is going to connect into your power which will come from pin 5 so I'm going to connect the short leg directly into my ground wire here and then I'm going to connect the resistor uh, to my power leg of my Arduino or to the positive of the Ar sorry of the LED and then I'm going to take that to pin 5 on my Arduino so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire in my shift register so I'm using the SN74HC595N uh, shift register from Texas Instruments so if you get the same one you can follow along with my pinouts here um, but if you're going to get a different shift register just make sure you check the data sheet for what you need to connect to where so um, how these shift reg registers work is it starts at pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all the way up to 16. So that's the pin order. And then what we're going to do with this particular shift register is we're going to connect pin 8 to ground as well as pin 13. We're going to connect pin 10 and 16 to 5 volt power. Our latch pin uh, is going to be pin 12 on the shift register. That's going to connect into pin 8 on the Arduino. And then our clock pin is pin 11 on the shift register and pin 4 on the Arduino. And our data pin is pin 14 on the shift register and pin 7 on the Arduino. So if you're following along with me, we'll connect all the wires up. Okay, so first I'm just going to wire in my shift register to my prototyping board here. I just had to use my wire strippers to hold this shift register in place while I get the first pin soldered in. Now that I have the first one soldered in, I can set it by holding it with my fingers here and then just pushing it all the way through. So now that it's all the way through, I can go ahead and solder the remaining 15 pins. So I want to make sure I have enough solder on there so I can connect in my network wires or my Cat5 wires. So if I have any of them that don't have enough, I can just go back and do that again. Okay, so this is my first ground connection here. I highly recommend you use some markers on this. I've already thoroughly confused myself with this wiring um, and I'm only just beginning. So make sure you count out the pins, double check yourself um, so you don't miswire it here. So what I'm first doing is connecting pin 8 and 13 or ground and then I'll connect into my ground on my PCB. So now I'm going to do pin 16 and 10 for my 5 volt power. Okay, now we're going to connect pin 11 on the shift register to pin 4 on the Arduino. Okay, so now I'm going to put the data pin, which is pin 14 on the shift register, into pin 7 on the Arduino. Then I'm going to put the latch pin, which is pin 12 on the shift register, into pin 8 on the Pro Mini. Okay, so I have everything wired up except for the DuPont cables that are going to plug into my relay. So I'm going to connect, I only have five relays, so I'm going to connect my first DuPont cable into pin 15, and then second, third, fourth, fifth. So my relays are going to be pretty close to this PCB here. So I just cut some 20 centimeter DuPont cables in half, and then I'm just going to slide them through the hole 
with the corresponding shift register location and then I will just solder it right into the shift register pin there. Okay, so I've wired in my DuPont cables for my five zones. And as you can see, it'd be very easy to add additional zones, just wire in another DuPont cable, and then you just add another zone in the Arduino code, which I'll show you how to do later. Okay, so I just need to get some power to my relay. So I'm gonna pull power from um, the board here, my raw, which is my five volts coming from over here, and then ground. So I'll just wire in two more DuPont cables here that will supply my relay with power. So now I need a place to connect in my 24 volt power for my irrigation valves and then that will go through my relays. So I'm going to use this three um, piece terminal block here. I'm just going to put two grounds. So one's going to be a ground input from my transformer and then a ground output and then the other is going to be the input uh, the 24 volt input to my relays. So I'm just going to connect it into this PCB board here. I'm just going to cut it off so then I can mount it to um, a board or something like that. So I have found it's easiest to drill out these holes a little bit. Sometimes the, the terminal block posts don't fit through so I just drill them out a little bit and then it will slide through fairly easily. So I'm going to go cut this and drill them out. So here it is. Just drilled the holes through so I could fit the posts and then cut it and drilled some additional holes so I can mount it to my board or whatever I end up using. So I'm just going to solder my grounds together here with some 18 gauge copper wire. Because this is an irrigation controller, all these relays will use the same power source. So I pre-bent a wire here that I'm going to solder to the back side of these relays. So if I wanted to, I could daisy chain all these together just by wiring in and screwing down a wire to each of these relays here. But I think it's going to look a little bit cleaner to solder this wire on the bottom. And then all I'll have to do is um, screw in my valve wires to each of these separate relays. So what I'm going to do is solder it to this pin over here so it'll be normally open. What that means is uh, when this relay is off, there will be no power going to the valve in my case. So I'm going to connect it to these two, or to this far one here, and then we'll wire in our valve wire to this one. So I'm going to go ahead and solder it now. So here it is all soldered up. Just one wire. This is where the source wire will connect into and then it's connected to each of the relays here. Okay now I'm ready to solder in my 24 volt line into my relay from my PCB board here. So I just got some hot glue to temporarily hold this together while I solder these two parts, two wires together. So I like to test as often as I can while I'm building so I can make sure that everything's running correctly, how it should, um, and if there are any errors I can resolve them sooner rather than later. So what I'm going to do now is upload the code. Even though we're not fully ready, um, I'm just going to be able to test my relays uh, with what I've built so far. So to do this we need the FTDI USB to serial adapter. So this is the model I have here. I'm not exactly sure what the number is. Um, but basically what you'll do is plug in your USB cord here and then your uh, DuPont cables on the other side and then uh, you just want to uh, have these pins um, corresponding with the Pro Mini pins here. So um, basically I have the how I know the ones that I need to connect is the TX and RX so it's just a straight shot for me uh, into the connections here and then I'll just plug it into the TX and RX side of the Pro Mini. It's hard to see but right here. So yours may be slightly different. Definitely, definitely consult your data sheet because um, you want to make sure that these are correct and then you can plug it into your computer and upload the code which I will show you now. All right, before we upload the code, I want to show you a couple things uh, that you may want to change. But first, uh, what you'll need to do is download the uh, new Liquid Crystal library from this Bitbucket link here in the code. So just click on that, download it, and then drag the folder into your libraries folder for your Arduino install. All right, so next, um, let's talk about some changes that you may want to make. So first, there is the number of valves. So obviously, just type in the number of valves that you have here. Valve reset time, if you want to adjust that, I just left it at 7.5 seconds or 7,500 milliseconds here, but if you want to adjust that at all, 
you can. Basically, this is just the time delay between each valve uh, activating. So when one turns off, it'll delay 7.5 seconds, and the next will turn on. Next, we have radio ID. So if you want to change your ID, uh, you can assign a manual one here, or just set it to all caps auto, and then that will assign one for you. Next we have debug, so if you're not going to use debugging, just comment this out and then it won't put out any comments to your serial monitor uh, and it also won't um, take up as much memory on your Arduino. So basically when you're all finished testing you're going to want to comment that out and re-upload your code. Next we have the uh, pin mode here. So if you're going to use the internal pull-up resistor and not put it on an external one, you're going to want to use this line of code. If you're going to use an external one, you can use this one here. Below that, we have the interrupt. So if you're not using a Pro Mini like I am, you may need to change your interrupt here. So the Pro Mini, uh, we're using one, interrupt one, and that's pin three. So if you changed your pin at all, you're going to need to change your interrupt here. Okay, and lastly, one thing that I forgot to mention up here is you may need to change this line here. So if your relays use active high, you'll just want to comment out this line, and then it will use active high for your relays. Okay, so that's it. Now we can upload our code. So what you'll want to do is go to Tools, choose your board. So in my case, it's going to be the Pro Mini. I'm going to choose my processor. I'm using the 5 volt 16 megahertz, and then my port. So I don't have it plugged into my computer right now for this this code demonstration, but um, you just want to choose the appropriate port that pops up when you plug it into your computer. Once you have the, those options selected, you just click the upload button here, this arrow, and it uploads the code to your Arduino. Okay, so now that we've uploaded our code, we're ready to add it to our controller. In my case, I'm using Avera. I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but first I just wanted to show you how I wired it up with power. So I'm just using an old USB cable that I cut up and then put on some DuPont connectors too, and then some Cat5 um, to our uh, connector here. So make sure that your polarity is correct, you know, your positive and negative goes in the right way. And then all you'll need to do is plug in that USB cord to a cell phone charger or computer, whatever supplies, you know, the USB power 5 volts. Okay, so let's move on to adding it to our Vera. Okay, so here's the plug-in in my Vera. So what I'll do is I'll click Start. And then now it's looking for devices, and then I just plug in my USB cable to 5 volt power. And then it will go through and find the devices. So in my case here, I should see seven devices. So I'm going to see my, uh, my node and then the six devices. One will be the run all and then the five individual zones. So now it's done, so I can press stop. And then if I scroll up, you'll see that my Vera is reloading here. Okay, so now when we go to the devices tab, we'll see these are our seven devices that were created. So now I'm just going to unplug my um, device one more time and then I'll plug it back in. And that'll sync itself back into Vera and it'll start populating uh, these nodes. Notice that the information here was populated. Okay, if you don't see it, you can always reload your Vera uh, and also do a control F5 on your browser. And if things aren't looking correct, those are the things that I do, and that usually resolves it. You can also just unplug your node or your device one more time, plug it back in um, so it can refresh everything. But it looks like mine came up correctly here. The next thing we're going to want to do is set up our variables. So to set our variables, we'll click on the wrench here. We'll go to the advanced tab scroll down and then we should see three variables. So I've already set mine up here but I'll show you what they mean here. So variable one is the time this zone will run 
if I use the All Zones button. So there's this device, the All Zones. So if I turn that on, it's going to step through each of my zones and it's going to use the time from variable 1. Okay, variable 2 is if I run this zone individually. So if I were to run this back garden zone individually, it would run for 18 minutes. Now I have these set both the same for now, um, but eventually I'm going to set up some automation with Plague to update these based on weather conditions. Lastly, we have variable 3. This variable is what will display on your LCD while it's watering, um, and also while you're selecting um, an individual zone to run from the menu button. If you want, you can put a name for your zone in here. Just keep in mind you're limited by 16 characters because that's all the LCD can display. So that's it. Don't forget to save and then we're ready to start testing. Okay, so we are finally ready to test. So I've just wired up some LEDs here to simulate my irrigation valves. Um, and then I've wired in power. So this is the USB power that I was talking about earlier that's powering my Arduino and radio and other parts here. So I just pulled 5 volts off of that and wired it into my relays here. So remember this was going to be my ground over here and then this is my it will be 24 volt power but now it's just 5 volt power and then I have wires coming out from each of these. This is where we'll, my valves will connect into and it's just connecting into my breadboard which will then power the LEDs. In between these LEDs I have a resistor here so I don't overload them and then this just goes back to my ground here. Okay so this is just going to simulate um, my valves being pressed. Now this like I just said this isn't the final product. We're going to put an LED in here or sorry an LCD so we can uh, actually see status on a screen but I just want to test this first to make sure all of this is working correctly before I throw another part in there. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into my computer USB. So notice my Arduino is powering up here, and what it's doing now is it's syncing the data from my Vera. Now you can also connect in your um, USB to serial adapter here, and you can use the serial monitor to see updates from um, the MySensors plug-in to your node here. So it'll show you what's going on. Okay, so now I cheated a little bit. I've already plugged this in and tested it um, because I hate doing things live, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyway, what just happened is my light just started flashing, and you'll notice one of my, my first zone turned on. So I've already done a little bit of debugging here, but I wanted to show you this. Um, basically, what's happening is my button here, this button will water all zones, it's it's thinking it's being pressed. So I've debugged it and I've figured out uh, with the help of Jim Bulldog Lowell from the forum that I need an actual um, 10k resistor wired in to my Arduino. So I need to put in a 10k resistor here uh, instead of using the onboard Arduino internal pull-up resistor to stop that switch from looking like it's been turned on. Okay. Um, so I know that I need to fix that, which I'll do in a minute here. Um, but I'm just going to turn off all of my zones by pressing that button. So it's in turn on or turn off. Um, and then I can still go through and I can test uh, my wiring. So I can go into my Vera um, and I can turn on each individual zone if I wanted to. Now notice that started flashing. So we have a 7 second delay, which is configurable in the code. Um, basically that allows your valves time to reset themselves. So you'll notice that, that started flashing and seven seconds later my LED turned on. Um, if I turn it off or turn another one on, it will uh, turn off my first valve and then pause for seven seconds before it turns on my other one. So now I'm just going to turn on valve three here. Notice it immediately turned off valve two. This is still flashing. And then in seven seconds, valve three should turn on, which it did. So I've gone through, I've tested all mine. All my connections look good with the exception of that. Um, I need to add that external pull-up. Um, but go ahead and test yours if you want. Otherwise, you can just keep proceeding on and test it all at the end. But I highly recommend testing at each stage whenever you can, which I've done here. 
Okay, so this is where I'm going to put my resistor here. It's a 10K resistor. Um, and what it needs to be wired to is the uh, 5 volt power. So I'm just going to use the VCC off of my Arduino, which is uh, happens, this is a 5 volt Arduino. Uh, so it's going to connect into the VCC and then into the um, button pin right over here. So you remember that this is our ground. Both of these are our ground on our button. And then over here we have a spare pin, which is where I'm going to wire this um, resistor. And then this other side over here goes to pin 3 on our Arduino. Okay, so basically we're going to wire a resistor between 5 volts and pin 3 on our Arduino. And then the button, when you press that, it's going to ground it out, which it will read as a button press. So that's how the pull-up resistor works. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. If not, just do a quick search online for pull-up resistors, and they have wiring diagrams, how to connect them all. But basically, um, I usually use the internal pull-up resistor on the Arduino, but this one isn't powerful enough, so that's why we're using the external resistor here. So I'm going to go ahead and wire that up now. Okay, so I wired in my pull-up resistor here, so now I'm going to connect it into my 5-volt power again. So notice my Arduino's lit up here. And then if you can see it, just barely flashing down here is the um, onboard LED. So that's downloading the data from Vera right now. When it's finished, this LED will start slow flashing there. Okay, so it's finished downloading all the data. Notice my zones didn't start up, so that resistor has helped with my button. And the button will still work here when I press it. Notice we've got the fast flashing indicating that it's starting a cycle. And then after the seven seconds, my first zone will light up. Okay, so next we're going to start wiring up our LCD. So the LCD we're using is a 1602A. Basically that means there's 16 characters and two rows. Um, and we're going to be using the I2C protocol. So um, I hope that you don't make this same mistake as me. This is my first LCD that I've worked with on a project. And um, I read the description on eBay, and they said this LCD came with the IT, I2C protocol, but in fact it didn't. It was missing this adapter here. So they must have copied and pasted a description from some other store. Um, but make sure you check to make sure you're getting this adapter here, uh, because this will enable you to use the I2C protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this in now. Okay, so I've got my I2C adapter soldered in here. Next, I need to connect it to my Arduino. So my ground and VCC um, are obviously going to go to ground and 5 volt power. And then the SDA connection and the SCL connection um, are going to go into analog pin 4 and 5. So SDA is going to go to analog pin 4, and SCL is going to go to analog pin 5. So my LCD is going to be connected right in here. So I'm just going to wire um, the power in underneath uh, my PCB board here and then these will just solder directly to my Arduino. Now that my LCD connections are all wired up, I'm going to power up my Arduino. Okay, so the first thing it's going to do is sync the time from Vera. Then it's going to update all the valve times here. You can see the status is flashing. Okay, so now it is powered up and ready to go. Notice our light is pulsing here, just like it was before. And now our status LCD, saying the system is ready, the date and time, and when we last watered. So that's it. Our LCD is fully functioning, and we're ready to go on to the next step. All right, so here's my finished product here, at least for now. I just screwed it into a board here temporarily because I need to get my irrigation up and running. So I just added some labels and um, obviously screwed it to the board here and then I will attach my 24 volt power into here and ground and then obviously all my valves will go in here. So now I can just mount it up to my wall, attach my cables and then my irrigation is ready to go. Okay so here is my irrigation controller uh, mounted to my wall. Just want to show you what the finished product looked like. Here's the 
the wiring going over to my valves and then I have a, it's not currently plugged in, but my transformer here uh, that will supply power that's plugged in right here and that will supply power to my valves. So uh, that's it. Congratulations on your build. Hope you enjoyed it. Once again, thank you so much, Jim, for making this possible. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to post them in the, the YouTube comments here. But um, if you need faster response, probably best to go to the MySensor site. There's a lot of very knowledgeable and helpful people over there um, who can definitely give you a hand if you run into any issues. Thanks, everyone.